Hi everybody and uh, welcome to another tutorial on unitycookie.com uh, in the tower defense series. So this time we're going to be building a uh, missile style or some sort of maybe a anti-air missile style turret. Let's take a look at how this works real quick. So naturally once we now move in this, uh, let's pretend it's an air enemy, the turret will look at it and fire a nice homing missile or some such which explodes on impact. And again the turret is lurping real nice so it's you know not moving too spastically or anything. Uh, you also notice and this took uh, sadly many hours to get working correctly uh, and eventually it came down to the simplest uh, method that I thought of just uh, maybe by pure luck even uh, but it has two joints. The head uh, tilts up and down while the base rotates and they happen at the same time. So like I said, uh, that took, uh, I went through all sorts of complex options and eventually found the simplest one that just worked. Uh, a lot of times I find that's how it is. So if you have something uh, something yourself that just isn't working, go back from, uh, start from scratch and make it simple. It might just, uh, might just work out like in this case. Okay, so let's take a look at how this, uh, how this is all put together. So first of all, uh, we have of course the new turret object here, and it's really not much different than the uh, than the old. Let's bring it in here, actually, the twin cannon turret, or however many uh, cannon turrets ended up with from the last tutorial. Um, we reused a lot of pieces even, and and just uh, pulled some bits from the script. That's always a good way to uh, do things when you're working, uh, especially in Unity, since everything can transfer over so easily. Uh, make sure not to rewrite everything from scratch, or you'll cause yourself a lot of extra trouble. Uh, okay, so we have this, um, and under here we have a couple basic pieces. Just expand these all for now. Alright, so I have the base, of course, just, uh, you know, what everything else is uh, parented to here. Just a simple base, and again, I took this from the old cannon base just to make sure it has the same size, uh, since if this is like any other tower defense. Most likely you want them all to have the same size base and such so they fit right into the grid. Uh, then under here um, we'll ignore these aim bits for now and move on. Those are a bit more customized uh, complex bits and pieces. Um, so we have the pivot part and the tilt part. So the pivot is just, or sorry, the, uh, the pivot, the pan part. And that's of course the part that pans left and right to turn it. And the tilt, which tilts it up and down. Uh, inside of there, then, we have just the main headpiece here, which actually never moves, it's just parented to this. And six different muzzle points, so in this case I have a script just uh, shooting the, the missile out of a random one each time. Uh, you can do something, uh, also I was thinking, uh, if you feel like it were, it would just, you know, go one, two, three, four, five, and then start cycling back around, might look neat. Um, you know, something more to add to your script later on after this. But that's the basics of it. Uh, we have two extra bits that I added in called the aim underscore pan and aim underscore tilt. And these weren't created in Max uh, or Blender or whatever you might be creating your turrets in if you aren't using this one here. Uh, these are something that I created just directly in Unity and they're they're just helper objects that help this do its uh, sort of special sort of funky aiming system with these two joints here. And they're simply just, you know, game object, create empty, and then I place the uh, the pan at the exact same point as the pivot pan, and the tilt at the exact same point as the tilt pivot here. And then move them up, uh, like they are now, out of any other, uh, or out of the, the pans, sorry, the pivot pans, uh, transform, and then parent them to each other just like these are. So the pivot pan on top, sorry, the pan item on top, and the tilt item underneath of that. So that way, just like in this case where the the pivot pan moves the tilt, in this case, I guess we'll, we won't be able to see here, but the, just like so, the pan moves the tilt. So, just the same there. And we'll see in the script how that all comes into play. Um, all right, and speaking of which, let's take a look uh, at the script, but uh, you know, first let's look at some of the new uh, project items we have here. So of course, uh, there's the new uh, turret Sam FBX object. If you happen to be using this one, otherwise you'll be creating your own. And just you know, follow along with uh, 
what's going on here should be pretty simple. You know, the base, pivot, head, and, and any muzzle points and all that. Uh, so we have that. Um, also there's a missile, just pretty simple, uh, especially with something like this, if it's going to be a uh, tower defense game with lots of these flying around, it's good to keep this as absolutely low poly as possible. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, okay, so we have that, um, and then this is just the prefab that I created once I had this all right and uh, ready to go. Uh, okay, so we have a new projectile, the SAM missile, and I'll bring this out to take a look. So again, this is just the mesh, the simple mesh with a particle effect that looks something like a thruster, and I actually stole this uh, straight out of the lunar lander. Uh, particle effect. So if you happen to have that project or already made one, that's a good base to start from. Or you can create your own, of course. I uh, won't be getting into that in this tutorial, but uh, lots of other uh, particle tutorials we've got on Unity Cookie. So uh, again, just the thruster underneath it, um, or parented to the missile. And then a couple things on this. We have a, a capsule collider, and I've put someone in the center because this moves awfully fast usually. Um, you might want to tweak that yourself. So this way, by the time uh, it hits the object, let's say, you know, let's say this here is actually the object. The turret is. If you have it on the outside, if it, if it encompasses the entire object, the capsule collider that is, like say, this might look more proper. Uh, but it's going to explode instantly right here, which just doesn't quite look right, or at least uh, in my testing. So I ended up pulling that down to right about 0.5. And then it seems it just goes through when the explosion looks like it just works a little better. Um, also, in this case, I've set the pivot for the uh, for the missile when I built it in Max. I set the pivot to be at the back so that when it turns, it moves around that point, uh, which I figured would make it look a little better in its movement. And that's probably part of the reason that I had to move this move this around since um, I have the explosion prefab instantiated uh, right at its pivot point, so it's always going to appear out here. So yours might be a little different, but uh, I'd recommend doing it this way for the movement, and then make sure this is uh, set up this way so that the explosion looks uh, appears in a good spot. Um, okay, so that's our missile. Uh, we just have a bit more on that. Uh, a special missile script on this. So if we take a look at this here. On the missile script, pretty basic. I again just took the, uh, the original Canon round script and edited it just a bit as you can see. Um, basically I'm moving it forward a certain amount, you know, just using the same speed variable. Uh, I'm having it uh, explode itself if it passes its its range. And then I'm also just having it uh, look directly at the target. So this transform.lookat is a nice, really simple way of making an object constantly look at something, um, just as it sounds I guess. Uh, so pretty simple there. You could make this a little more complex if you wanted to and have it sort of lerp to look at the target so it would have a smoother transition. Uh, again, this is one thing that since there might just be a lot of these flying around um, and a lot of everything else going on in one of these games and it's probably going to be targeted towards mobile, uh, the simpler the better. And in, for the most part, uh, you know, a viewer is not going to notice the difference between a direct look at uh, and a lerp, unless you have a very slow moving missile and the target is zigzagging around a lot, then it could be a problem. But in general, you know, I try and keep it as simple as possible and use this if you can. Uh, okay, so here we have uh, another bit here. If the target disappeared, so we don't want it to end up getting uh, any null references or just flying on forever and uh, just not making sense. So uh, if, you know, if the target explodes, like let's say I have this missile chasing a target, but another missile explodes it, uh, this one will just explode itself. So as soon as the target doesn't exist anymore, it just explodes. Makes pretty good sense. Uh, another thing if you wanted to get um, extra complicated with this, you could make this, uh, the missile automatically find a new target. Like let's say you could um, set up sort of a, a range or have you in a separate collider on it, a sphere collider that as it's moving it would automatically find other targets within its range and if there's something that it could find sort of like an onboard radar it might veer off course uh, from the destroyed target and find a new one and pursue that so that'd be a nice addition to make uh, a little further down here uh, we have just the on trigger enter function and again this is just when this basically when it hits something 
uh, it's going to explode itself. Nothing, nothing fancy there. In some future tutorials, once we start adding in real enemies and damage and such, uh, of course this would not only explode itself, but also either explode the enemy or add a certain amount of damage to it. Uh, you know, something like that. But for now, I'm just doing this. And I guess I was testing this, we'll just remove that debug log there. Uh, okay, down here then we have the explode function, simply instantiates an explosion, uh, which we've determined up here, my explosion, which you drag in right there, just a prefab, and then it destroys itself. So, again, very simple, just works, uh, gets the job done. Uh, okay, so that's the missile script, and we can move on to taking a look at the much more complicated, but still fairly simple, um, turret script here. So let's open that up. So again, we're using a lot of things from the uh, the original Canon script, the projectile, reload time, etc., uh, just to keep things nice and simple. Um, once again, going into things that you could uh, make more complex and better, uh, and we'll definitely have a tutorial on this sometime in the future, uh, <laughs> like a lot of things. Uh, but you could use classes so that you wouldn't have to constantly be rewriting this. Classes are a great, great way to uh, just reuse code and have sort of a base that you build from for multiple items. Uh, if you've ever used UDK before Unreal, you're probably familiar with this without really knowing, maybe because everything you do when you're doing uh, Unreal script is uh, modifying a base class, basically, or almost everything if you're modding. So you might be, uh, might be familiar with that, or even just from Unity script. Uh, just another idea. Okay, so going on, you know, we have uh, just a bunch of uh, the, the mostly the same variables from the uh, the Canon script. A couple new ones here. Uh, we have the pivot tilt and pivot pan, and these are just referring to. Let's move this over. The uh, there we go. Uh, of course, the pivot pan and pivot tilt here. Uh, which again are just the parts that either pan or tilt. And I'm just assigning the transform in here. Uh, then we have the aim pan and aim tilt, and that's where we get these guys coming in. And I'm using these uh, again just as sort of helper objects to get an exact look rotation that I want, uh, which I then make the actual objects, you know, the visible uh, pan and tilt objects, move or, or lerp to that. Uh, to that look rotation. So uh, we'll look for that in the code as we go along here. Uh, okay, so again, same fire time, rotation, aim, air. Uh, in this case, actually, I've removed this, so I'm going to just straight up get rid of these. No longer needed for the turret. Since it's a turret uh, in general, or sorry, a, for this missile turret, um, it doesn't need to do the, the cannon style where it would point at it, fire, move, point, fire, and it sort of move in a, not necessarily a jerky motion, but it would move and make a definite effect and keep moving. Uh, since this is a sort of a missile turret, it doesn't need to actually aim, it just gets in the general direction and lets loose a missile. Uh, I've made this one so it just constantly is looking, uh, lurping towards the, the target and firing off missiles. So it's a little less complex in that way, actually. Uh, okay, so moving down here. Uh, much like the uh, the Canon script again, <laughs> uh, like I said, stealing lots of it from there, which is always a good way to go. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen is this: is uh, the on trigger enter, and that's when uh, any object, uh, and if it's titled or sorry tagged as enemy, if it enters its uh, collision sphere. So if we go back and look at this. We have the collision sphere around here. Uh, if anything enters that then uh, we can, uh, or we know that an enemy has just come in here and we need to uh, move on and check these things. So we're going to set the next fire time and we're going to get the target. So we're setting the next fire time uh, again just to make sure that it doesn't fire instantly right away as soon as something enters and it's not actually turned to meet it. First it will turn, this gives it a little time for that, then it will fire. Uh, and of course we have the, uh, we're setting the target here right after that. And again, the other is the item that entered this uh, the, the sphere. And I'm realizing uh, <laughs> one extra issue here. When I went ahead and thought I could delete, 
uh, that next fire time I actually should not have. So let's go ahead and add that back in if, if you removed it. Sorry about that. So that was simply a private var next fire time. And that was a float. That should make Unity happy again. Okay. Alright, so anywho, um, we've got that back in there. So the trigger's entered, we set a target, uh, and we wait for the next fire time before we do anything. Um, so occasionally the next thing that might happen would be, uh, we'll just move on here to the on trigger exit. Obviously if the enemy exits, you know, the, the big green trigger sphere here, uh, if it exits, then we just want to set the target to null. Uh, don't want it to keep chasing something that's no longer in its in its sphere. Um, also, we probably might want to add on a null setting to the uh, to the target so it doesn't keep targeting if it doesn't exist. Uh, but I guess that's something we'll deal with again once we are adding damage and such. So that when the when the item explodes, we don't suddenly get a null reference that ah you know the target doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, something to look into in the future. Uh, once we're actually, once we have damage and exploding items and real enemies and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Okay, so we have our target. It just entered in. Let's go back along the path here. Now under function update, of course this is happening every single frame still. Uh, first it'll check if it has any targets, uh, and if it does, then we start getting into the uh, the fancy look stuff. So now the aim pan will look at the target. So again, that's this little helper object here. It's just going to look at the target, and then we have to do something where we uh, force it to only be looking in the uh, in the y direction. So that is, if we look at it here, uh, so it's rotating around the green arrow here, so on the y, because otherwise, if it's looking directly at the target, of course, it's going to end up you know doing all sorts of crazy stuff like this. But we only want it to rotate like so. Uh, so we set the aim pan, the Euler angles, uh, and if you do just aim pan dot rotation, you'll be working in quaternions, which get all sorts of complicated. Uh, I think even the Unity documentation says only mess with this if you really know what you're doing. Uh, so I generally leave it alone whenever I'm setting anything. Uh, so anyway, we just use the Euler angles, which is the usual x, y, z that you see here on the rotation, and we set those to a vector three, of course. Uh, as 0 for the x, and then we take the aim pan, or, or actually its own angle dot y, and 0. And the reason I'm not just doing, uh, like normally you might think I'd say, uh, you know, aim pan dot Euler angles dot x equals 0, and then the same thing for z, which might seem a little uh, simpler is that uh, if you directly set any one of these one at a time you're going to end up with some rotation issues to get a little wonky not always but it's going to come in at some point probably uh, even the uh, the unity manual again warns that you just should not do that it's always best to set them all at once through a vector three like this so that's why i'm doing you know zero for the x uh, keeping the exact same for the y and then setting zero for the z uh, lastly then with these helper objects I tell the aim tilt which is again this little guy down here underneath the pan uh, I tell that helper to simply do a look at the target and we can do that because it's already looking uh, due to this one directly at it on uh, sorry at the target on the all, all the proper angles except uh, except the uh, the X that we want so it just looks directly at it and then it works uh, okay so we have that and then what these give us is um, basically exact uh, rotation targets that we that we know we want. So now we have uh, we don't have to do any fancy math or anything to find those. You could do this all programmatically. You definitely could. Uh, I'm just a very visual person, uh, and I like to have real objects sitting here uh, so I can even you know watch them uh, in play mode and such to see what's going on. Uh, just some, the way I like to usually do it. Uh, okay, so we have those working, uh, and then we just take the actual pivot pan, so the object that, that rotates in is visual, and we set its rotation directly uh, using a quaternion lerp to be, uh, oops, here we go, to move from its current 
and then go towards the uh, the aim pan helper rotation. So it's just going to move you know, again from where it is and then rotate until it matches what this guy is at. And using the, uh, the little time delta time times turn speed trick, uh, just the same as the, uh, the cannon if you remember, just keeps it constantly lurping toward it nice and smooth. And then I do the exact same thing for the pivot tilt, so making it tilt nice and smooth to match. Uh, works really well, and then we have this neat looking uh, pivot where it can move in both directions at once, so like so, and like so on its own. Just makes it look a little nicer. Uh, we'll have some uses for that as well when we go into um, the mortar style um, uh, turret, which will be coming up next, hopefully. Uh, okay, so let's keep going here, I guess. We have the, of course, just simple, you know, if time that time is greater than next fire time going to fire the projectile. Uh, again, this is all pulled straight from the cannon script. The time that time is being figured out down here. Uh, anytime uh, we actually fire something, we tell the next fire time to equal the current time plus the reload time. So let's say the game has been running for 10 seconds. We fire. The reload time is 5 seconds. The next fire time is going to be 15 seconds into the game. So it'll keep uh, keep track up here. So if time to time is you know then it'll be 11, 12, 13, 14, and it could be 15 and a half, and it's going to fire. Uh, and that's the reason for the greater than or equals is that uh, sometimes or almost all the time you're not of course going to get you know equals exactly the fire time. So you don't want to use the regular double equals only if it's greater than or equals because you you'll usually be just a little bit over. Uh, so that's going to be then uh, fire that projectile and here uh, do things a little bit differently uh, of course we're going to play the audio again do that next fire time uh, and then I'm just using uh, a quick little random dot range to grab any one of these um, uh, these muzzle positions and fire the missile out of that uh, and again with random dot range since it's an int we have to go one extra if you're looking at this and saying aha it's going from zero to six but the uh, the index actually goes from 0 to 5 technically. Uh, anytime you use an int in a random dot range, the last number will never be used. So this is actually only going to uh, result in anywhere from 0 to 5 being uh, being returned. So just a little tip in case I hadn't mentioned that before. So anyway, we then spawn a new missile, and at the same time as we spawn it by using the, you know, doing var new missile equals instantiate. Uh, this way we right away assign that new missile to a variable so that we can go back and uh, do anything to it we might want to. In this case, I am going in getting the component, so the projectile missile component, which is the script on the missile, and then setting the target to be the target that we found that the, the turret has. Uh, and up here also, um, you can see here is where I'm just uh, using this integer so this var m is getting that random range, and then we're just dropping that in so that we pull, uh, use the muzzle position based on that index, uh, where to fire it from. Okay, and that's pretty much it for this. This one was in some ways a little simpler, in some ways a lot more complex than the uh, than the cannon. So again, we have uh, just the neat looking uh, double rotation. Let's take a look at that one more time, just uh, just because it took many hours unfortunately to figure out where I can tilt up and down on that one independent axis and also rotate on a separate so lots of good uses for that uh, okay so hope you guys all enjoyed this uh, if you've been following around along uh, sorry it took so long to get to this one just uh, lots of things coming up so next I think we'll be working on making a mortar or indirect fire type uh, turret so then we'll have uh, the three basics and we can move on to enemies. So that'll be, you know, the direct fire of the cannon, this sort of uh, guided fire of the missile, uh, and then lastly the indirect, some sort of mortar or art artillery type uh, firing thing, which actually should be the most fun and also one that I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to uh, calculate some bits of that, but uh, that's the fun part and I'll see you guys next time on that one. Thanks for watching.